Hi everyone, we're going to sketch this graph y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 2. And uh, we're going to plot uh, our stationary points and our inflection points and look at concavity as well. Uh, we're going to graph this on the interval just 0 to 4. And since at 0, that would be your y-intercept, if I plug in 0 in all these x's, that would mean my y-intercept occurs at 0, 2, because this would cancel out. And also, let's look at the graph itself. It's a polynomial, so it's smooth and continuous. Um, it has a degree of 3. And the power function for uh, the cubic function looks like this. So we know kind of what our m behavior looks like. It looks like this. Also, with the degree 3, it means we have at most uh, n minus 1 turning points. So basically, that would be n minus 1 turning points. Since we have 3, that would mean 3 minus 1 equals 2 at most. It could be less, like this one doesn't have, this one right here doesn't, but 2 turning points. And that you probably learned from in pre-cal. So um, it could look something like um, this, and that would be your two turning points. All right, or it could look like we start here, go down, and go up. But that would be at most two turning points. All right, now um, let's get started. And to get the critical points to find our minimum and maximum values, where the gradient here is at zero, we're going to take the first derivative. So let me write this again. We have y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 2. So you take the first derivative, so I'll do, let me just write this as f of x. So f of x. So you take uh, f prime of x, and that's going to give you 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. And you set the derivative to 0. So let's factor out a 3. You get x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Divide both sides by 3. Uh, that just leaves 1 here, so we don't have to deal with that. You have x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. That means your x values are at x equals 3. Uh, both of these should be negative, sorry. Negative. And x equals 1. So your critical or stationary points occur at x equals 3 and 1. To find the y-coordinate, we're going to plug in our x values to the original equation. So let's plug in 3. And also, this is 3. We're going to also plug in the 1 and get our value. Now, when you plug in the 3, you're going to get, um, let's see, I believe, you plug in 3, you're going to get 2. And when you plug in the 1, you're going to get 6. So your your critical, uh, your min and max values, we'll have to determine what that is, is going to occur at 3, 2, and 1, 6. So remember those. All right, x and 3. So now we have to find out our inflection uh, point. So we're going to take the second derivative. Now the second derivative... And uh, the first one was 3, so our first derivative was 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. So our second derivative, f double prime, is going to be um, 
6x minus 12. So you set this to 0. Let's factor out that 6. So it occurs at x equals 2. Now we plug in 2 to see what our y component will be. So we plug it back into our original equation. So that's going to be 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 squared plus 9 times 2 plus 2. And when you plug it in the 2 there, and you use your calculator kind of do this mentally, you're going to get uh, 4. So our inflection point occurs at 2 comma 4. Now let's test for concavity. Now we recall our first critical points we get with the first derivatives were x equals 1 and x equals 3. So we're going to plug these points into our second derivative here. We're going to plug that in and see what our value would be. So, so f double prime of 1 equals 6 times 1 minus 12. That gives you negative 6. Now let's plug in um, the 3 and that would get 6 times 3 minus 12. And that gives you positive 6. So what's this telling you is that since this is negative, that means it's a maximum at 1. All right? And this one is a minimum at 3. That just means the curve uh, looks like for a maximum it's going to look like this at 1. And at 3, the curve is going to look like this. Something like that. It also tells you around the inflection point, the negative means it's concave downward. We're talking about this now. And positive means it's going to concave upward. All right, so let's uh, graph it. I think uh, since we have to graph from 0 to 4, we have a value for 0, which is 2. We have a value for 1, which was 6. We have a value for 2, which is 4. And a value for 3. And what was our 3? Our 3 was, um, I forgot what 3 was. Is it 2? Yeah. So, um, this was your um, critical points. And this was your inflection point. And this was your y-intercept. So we need 4. We need to know what's going on at 4. So we're going to plug that in, our original equation. So f of 4 equals 4 cubed minus 6 times 4 squared plus 9 times 4 plus 2. And that's going to equal uh, 6. So now we can graph these points and uh, sketch a smooth curve. All right. So basically, we're starting, we want to just graph from 0 to 4. And I put the points here. So um, it does follow what I said about the turning points and whatnot. So we're coming up here, and again, 1 common 6 was a max. That means it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn negative. The slope is positive here, then it turns negative. Now, 2 comma 4 was your inflection point. Now, so you, we want to know what that looks like. So it's going to be um, concave downward here up to 2 comma 4. Then it starts ca concaving up. So it's going that way. So our inflection point looks like that or the curve does. And then uh, at 4, we had uh, when we evaluated 4, we went to 6 again. So we're just going to go back up to this. It's supposed to be smooth and continuous. And come back down to there. So it's hard to graph on this, but your graph should look something like that. And that's it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. 
We're going to find the sum for each arithmetic series described. So remember, a series is when you're adding up the numbers and finding um, the sum of them. Uh, this is for your arithmetic sequence, but it's a good way to find your various components, like a first term or the common difference or so forth. And this is your sum formula. And if you wanted to, you could uh, rewrite this formula by substituting a sub n with this formula here. I like to do them separately, so uh, that's what I'm going to do on this video. So we have the first one, and we want, we're trying to find our sum. So I'm just going to write the formula down. Make sure you know these for your SAT, by the way. They don't put it on the a ACT um, formula chart. So they give us, the first two are pretty easy because you just plug it in. Our n is 12, first term is 12, They're both 12s, okay, and our last term is 100. So basically we get 6 um, times 1, um, 1, 2, and 6 times 112 equals 6, 72. Alright, and the next one's the same way. I think we're going to get zero though. So we have S of, because these two numbers are the same. So basically you're going to get 15 divided by 2, first term plus your uh, last term. So this ends up being zero. So the sum is zero. And then we do this one. So I write the formula down. Our n is um, 8 divided by 2. Our first term is 42. And lo and behold, we do not have our last term. So what I do to get this last term here is I use my first formula and find out what it is. This is the nth term I'm looking for, or the last term. So we have 42 plus n minus 1 which is 8 minus 1 times your common difference. So this is going to be 42. This is 42 plus 7 times 6. 7 times 6 is 42. So 42 plus 42 equals 84. So 84 is a sub n. So now I'm just going to go ahead and erase this and put 84 in. Now, so this is 4 times, this is going to be 1, 2, 6. So 4 times uh, 126 equals 504. All right, and then w the last one's very similar. So if I just write out my sum formula, because that's what they want, I have 20 um, divided by 2, my first term, and again, I don't have my last term. So that's what I want to find is my last term. So I plug in my formula, my a sub n equals your first term plus n minus 1, 20 minus 1 times 2 and a half. Now 2 and a half is 5 halves. So I like to write it like that. But if you're using a calculator, it probably doesn't matter anyway. So you have 4 plus 19 times 5 halves, and that's going to give you, let's see, 4 plus 19 times 5 divided by 2, um, so that's going to be, so I'm just going to break it down, this is a 4 plus, um, 47.5, which equals 51.5. So now I'm going to change this to 51.5. Now just simplify all this out. So the sum is 10. That's 10. And then 4 plus 51 is 55. So 55.5, so 10 times 55.5, you just move the decimal place over, and that's going to equal 555. 
And that's your final answer. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.